Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Jasmine Sounds and today we are going to take a look at recreating this incredible synth from the track Home Resonance. So first off, when you're looking to recreate a sound, I recommend grabbing your reference track and setting up your MIDI and tempo to match the reference or at least be really similar. This helps you zone in on the much finer details of the sound you're looking to recreate. Unfortunately, for copyright reasons, I can't play the original track in this video, so when you see me entering specific values for a lot of parameters, just know that there was a lot of back and forth with my reference to get there when I was originally creating the sounds. This process involves a lot of trial and error, and if you look up here, you can actually see that we are on resonance pad 5, so it took me a few tries to get here. Now let's open a fresh instance of Vital and get our MIDI set up. If you're good, you can do this by ear, but I'm not, so I was lucky enough to find this MIDI online and I'm just gonna stick with that. Really quickly, I'm gonna drop the level here on OSC1 to about 0 0.267. And I just want you to listen to how this sounds before we make any changes at all. You might have noticed that it actually already sounds pretty good, and I just want to use this opportunity to show how important voicing really is, especially for a sound like this. By using interesting chords and inversions, you know, having your notes hit in the right octaves, it really influences the impact the sound has on you. And if this track didn't have such amazing voicing, I don't think it would have nearly the same impact, no matter how cool all the sounds were in it. So it's really worth spending time on your raw MIDI, in addition to all the little synthesizer settings and effects. With that being said, let's get into making the sound. So first of all, for a sound like this, I use a little trick here where we actually enable the multiband compressor right off the bat so we're really able to work around it and use it to its full potential. I'm going to set the mix to 0 0.454, the attack to 86, and the release to 32. And also, I know this is turning red over here and it looks like we're clipping, but there's actually a little bit of headroom before Vital actually starts clipping on your master. You can see this up here. Next up, since I've worked with this kind of sound a lot before, I know it's really just a detuned saw wave at its core. So I'm going to set the voice count to 9 and the detune down to 7%. Really quickly, I'm going to head into the advanced tab over here. I'm just going to turn this down to around 61. A good way to get this setting right is to listen to your original reference track in mono, and that's exactly what I did here when originally finding this value. Let's take a listen to what we have so far. Next up, you're going to be setting a couple of envelopes here. In our volume envelope, just bump the decay up to 1.9. And we're going to turn the sustain all the way down. Now just grab this point here and boost the tension curve up a little bit. Now here in envelope 2, this is what we'll be using for our filters, so I'm just going to go and make this one a little bit snappier. I'm going to set the attack to 0 0.035, the decay to 1.29, and drop that sustain all the way down again. Now moving down to the filters here, this is sort of where the secret sauce of the sound comes in. We're going to have two different filters doing pretty much the exact same thing, but the way they interact really adds some analog character and polish to the sound that's really not possible using just one filter. First, let's turn on filter 1. We're going to set this to a 12 decibel ladder filter. We're going to drop this resonance all the way down and make sure only oscillator 1 is routed in. Let's set this cutoff to negative 3.657 semitones. And by the way, if your vital shows in hertz, you can just go to the advanced tab here and change this setting. Let's drop envelope 2 onto the cutoff and set this to 42.71. Now for filter 2, we're going to be using the dirty 24 decibel setting. Again, drop this resonance all the way down. And this time we're just going to be routing in filter 1. Set the cutoff to 7.812. And 
And now we're just going to put envelope two in this and set this to 35.03. Now just check out how powerful serial filters can be on a basic saw wave like this. This is just filter two. And this is just filter one. Using serial filters is a great way to get that sort of warm analog polish for sounds like this. Now let's head over to the advanced tab and set up some pitch drift on the master tuning. We're going to be dragging both random one and random two over onto the master tune here and make sure you hold shift when you let go so it's in bipolar mode. Same thing with random two. You're going to set random one to 0 0.3 and random two to 0 0.26. Now over here on random one, turn on sync and set this to 0 0.92 in seconds mode. And for random two, let's use sine interpolate. Now we get this sort of retro or pitch drift tape type of effect. Check it out. Also turn on sync for random too, I forgot. <laughs> now heading over to the effects here, I'm actually going to take our reverb and put this before the compressor. This way when the sound stops playing or it gets quiet for a second, the compressor will let up and our reverb will really kick in. I'm going to take off this high shelf and set the reverb so that it only affects a very narrow part of the spectrum. Something like this. And then I'm going to boost the chorus, which always sounds good on retro sounds like this. Drop the size as well. And mix up just a little bit. And time down. We can let a little more highs in. That's good. Now for the delay here, we're going to go for a 16th note ping pong. I'm going to set the cutoff to 79.04. And then just turn the spread all the way down. We're going to play with this later. Now for the mix here, I'm just going to turn this all the way down. I'm going to set up a macro called wet. And then drag this back onto the mix and set it to around 0.52. And let's throw this onto the reverb as well. Hold shift to make it bipolar. Now let's just turn this up to around here. And now we get this. Next up here, we're going to use some bit crush distortion to shave up some highs while adding a little bit of grit. We're going to set the drive here super low to negative 28.19. Again, we want this effect to be really subtle. Now set this filter to post, and we're just going to take down just a little bit on these highs here. Next up on the EQ here, I'm just going to set up a few final boosts. A little bit of low shelf here. Even put a tiny bit of mid boost. Just a hair. And then we can go pretty aggressive on the highs here since we took so much out. We have one last thing to do here in Vital, and that's to set up this macro that I'm going to be calling Clamp. 
And this does exactly what it sounds. It just cuts the decay down a little bit and makes things feel a bit tighter. The first thing I'm going to do here is just drop this on the delay spread at 0 0.768. And then come over to the matrix here and just crank down on this mod remap a bit. Making this control exponential like this makes this delay effect really come through once we turn this macro to a certain point. Next up, you're going to put this on envelope one's decay and set this to negative 0 0.135. And the same for envelope two, but we're going to be setting this to negative 0 0.168. Now finally here, we're going to come over to Filter 2's cutoff, drag this on, and set it to negative 9.22. Let's take a listen to how our new macro sounds. Here's the automation I used to get it as close as possible to the original sound. Okay, so now our sound's about 90% done, but I'm just going to show you a few of the stock post effects I used to get at that last 10% of the way there. Here's how it sounds with them on. So first up here we have this patcher, which looks a little bit complicated at first, but it's really not so bad. I just have a mid-side splitter going on here in Fruity Stereo Enhancer. And then on the side channel we're just doing a little bit of boost on the high end. Which gets split into two different Fruity Convolvers. The first one we just have some white noise in here with an envelope like this, which gives it this really cool sort of blur effect. And then over here in the second one we just have a basic sort of, it's like a church, big room sort of impulse. And then that's going into a Fruity Love Filter, which is just doing this sort of syncopated volume automation to really bring out that delay effect. I decided to do this after referencing the original track. It's really subtle, but it definitely makes a difference, so check it out. I'm just going to turn it up a lot real quick. Yeah, you can really hear it now. And then finally here in the mid channel, we just have a little bit of a low pass going and then a couple of boosts around 200 and about 1K. Next up here, we have this Maximus going and this is just a multiband compressor that I'm using to really squash the sound and bring everything forward. I'm also adding a little bit of saturation here in the master, you can see. We got some pretty aggressive compression this low band here. You can see we're really driving this pre-input gain. Same thing with mids. And then highs just a little bit less. It really just brings everything to the front. And then last we have this fruity parametric EQ that's just doing a couple of final boosts here. And then the very last thing I did here was just add this layer of noise. And there you have it, the synth from Home Resonance. Thanks so much for the support, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. And as always, the synths from this video, including that other one you heard in the intro, will be available in the Discord for patrons and YouTube members. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.